Now, there's an anticlimax. I have a black eye, and John Bennett speaking French. Thank you, John, for mumbling the gibberish. Thank you in Belfast. Thank you, uh, Susan McWell is up here in BBC Radio Foil. Who am I? BBC Radio Foil. And BBC Radio Ulster. With Jerry Anderson. That's who I am. Thank God that woman's there, or we wouldn't know where we were. It's coming up to 29 minutes to 11 o'clock. Uh, the time... Oh, no, sorry, I've already told you the time. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555 678, or you can send me an email at jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. You want to see this desk in front of me? What a mess. I really am going to have to sort this out, which means I'm going to have to play some music for three or four minutes and try and get some kind of semblance of order here. It's not easy for me, you know, coming in here at this time of the day. Somebody should come in here earlier and read up. I don't know why they don't. This is Christy Moore. I love this song. A lot of people wanted to hear this again. Read it in the flicker and light. I, my headphones keep falling off and I can't hear anything. Right, I have many things to read here, uh, many things to get through, many subjects to delve into. Uh, here's a man who writes to me and he said, I find your programme very interesting every morning. Hearing about the roadkill brought back memories of when my sister and I were kids at school. We both had dirty heads, as most kids had. People don't have dirty heads anymore. People don't come around and look for nits in your head. My sister, Annie, had a dirty head and had to have all her hair cropped off. This was a common thing. Many little bald children going home. Terribly cold in the winter, by the way. My dad, Johnny, found a fox in the roadkill and was able to plait it into her hair, and nobody knew the difference. It was the fox's tail he used. As she got older, she kept it in and even dyed it black like the rest of her hair. My, her sister was and still is jealous of her mane. My dad once found a hedgehog on a roadkill and he skinned it and filled it with concrete and we wiped our feet on the bristles. It just goes to show that nothing should go to waste in nature. My dad was the best. What a man he was. I think he was the first ever to think of such an idea. I can't think of anyone else who's filled a hedgehog with concrete and wiped uh, children's feet on it. I think he made you could have a first there. Have you ever heard of Johnny Cash singing a boy named Sue? Well, he went and named me Leroy. That's... <laughs> And uh, oh, here's a letter complaining about something I've done. I better read that in case it's uh, libelous. And this is a uh, 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 lots of land. Uh, Mrs. Anna Spence said, "I would like to say a big thank you for the very nice hostess trolley I won on your rickety wheel. It was donated by a Mrs. Smith from Down Patrick. Uh, my husband called for it on Sunday, and he said she was a very nice woman. She listens to you every day, so thanks again. I uh, may I wish you and your staff a very happy and peaceful Christmas, and I hope you enjoy your hostess trolley. What else would a man or a woman need coming around this festive time? Have you got a host of t- hostess trolley? <laughs> Hello? Do you? Oh, sorry, you're in here. Have you got a hostess trolley? Have you? Do you have a hostess trolley? No. Well, I'm asking you, call, have you a hostess trolley? Call on two. Uh, get away from me, will you? Stop, you're not allowed in here. I'm looking for your mute button. My mute button is none of your business. There it is there, look. Where? There's a button here that's not working. Go, don't come in here. Look, there it is there. Is that a... That's it. Look, there's the light on. It means I can speak now. Go away. People aren't allowed in here. I'm the only one here. Only broad... Don't you see the sign on the door? Flagship broadcasters only? Hello, good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. And I want to thank you most sincerely for recommending. That was short and sweet. You See, you cut that. Off. You cut that off. No, I didn't. I didn't cut us off. You cut that off. Hello, somebody I, did. I know what happened. I know what happened. We have a. a Things are a, going wrong. Today. Yes, we have a person in another There's studio. There's someone down there in the studio. Who's that down there? It's all right. We'll get it sorted. Out. Get that. Don't, don't they realise there's a flagship program here? They're interfering. Uh-huh. Look, they, on two. Oh, see, see if he does that again. On two. On to- Hello? Mm-hmm. Hello, dear. I repeat myself. Thank you most sincerely for recommending John McBride of 60 Upper Arthur Street. Did, did you get a shirt? Killer, superb. Now listen. Yeah. The chap in question went along, was attended by what he described as a true professional, you're Jack, a master of his craft. Would I send like, you anywhere? Would I send you anywhere, Mickey Mouse? Well, didn't I know who to ask? Mm-hmm. Did I go to a chain store? Mm-hmm. No. no way. No way, right? No, no. And so if anybody wants something original, good, maybe not get it for Christmas, but they're vouchers, right? There's only, Christmas is only one day after all. Absolutely. But thank you most sincerely. That's all right. And now that's not the first time you got me a very rare book about horses, right? Could I be turned off? Well, turn yourself off if you want. Could I turn you on? No. I think that's another question entirely. Well, you know. I think you'd have, I think you'd have your work cut out. 
Oh, you don't know me, Jess. You don't know him. It's a, it's a cold fish. I, I, I thought cold we fish. We played before. the voice in. I want turned off. Right. Turn off. I turn you off now. Right. He's gone now. It's okay. You can talk freely. Right. All right now, Jess. Yes. Thank you most sincerely, John well, McBride. Yeah. Let's 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 be careful here because listeners out there, some of them are cynical, and they may think that I've set you up here for some kind of financial benefit that I may get from advertising this man's uh, emporium. But well, if you do, all good luck to you. If no. you do, I was stuck. You fixed me up. If you get um, shirts free forever, good luck to you, pet. Didn't our Lord say something like that? What? He was hungry and he was fed. He was clothed and he gave him clothes. He was naked and he was clothed. He was naked get and you. he was clothed. Yeah. You were naked and I clothed yes. him. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you very All much right, indeed. Thank I'm sure, you most sincerely. I'm sure the people concerned will be uh, will be very pleased that you've given us uh, your recommendation. Well, no, as I said, we want something professional, original. Go along the John McBride 60 Upper Arthur Street and you get well looked after by your Jack, if a you want, master. If you want a man's job done, don't go to a boy. Exactly. Don't pass your chain stores whose shirts exactly. cannot be earned. And I've earned, so, mother of five sons, I've earned thousands of shirts in my days and you can keep your chain stores I'll goodbye what, have, Jerry I have a number of shirts from that man and I have to say that the day one of those shirts rides up your back it'll be the end of the world exactly ok yes. bye bye thank you thank you bye bye Everything OK you said, now? I think, I think you've done all right out of that, yeah. You should, should, get a, should be a shirt and that for you. I, I wear a 15 and a half, by the way. Just let me say two words yeah. to you. you Foil show band. Foil show band? Yeah. Yes? You're riding on the backs of them. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. Oh, <laughs> yes, you no, are. Oh, no, oh, yes, I'm you not. Are. Oh, oh, yeah. No. Very interesting I, thing in the I paper. get I get their suits, their old band <laughs> suits to wear from time to time. Oh, what size of a shirt do you wear, Jerry? Fifteen and a half. A so do I, funny enough. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting thing in the paper but, today. There's a call on one. I know that. Did you did you know that uh, yesterday was the hundredth anniversary of the first radio signal sent across the Atlantic by Guglielmo Marconi? This is something I want to ask you. Yes. I know. I've discussed this before with. Or colleagues here at work. Colleagues? Yes. Never heard you using that no, word before. No. It's because I was away I yesterday. know the answer. Yes. But I don't know the question. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the answer then? The answer is, Mary had a little lamb. I'll tell you what the question what is. What is the question? Is uh, that the first no, radio no. broadcast, television broadcast, or is it the first telephone? Well, it's uh, uh, widely held as being the first crap record made by Paul McCartney. No. For a start. That's, Mary had a little lamb. That's the first message. Well, I was talking to Walter about this the other day. He said that a uh, hundred years ago yesterday, Guglielmo Marconi sent two sharp taps from Cornwall to a radio station, or what was then known as a, an outpost, in Newfoundland. And the people in Newfoundland heard the two short taps from Cornwall. And they realised that it was a, a momentous day. Walter said he remembers it well. He was listening to it on the radio. And he... Uh, that's <laughs> very good. No, and he said that's what made him become a broadcaster because he said, by thunder, if you can hear sh two short taps from Cornwall to Newfoundland, yeah. you can talk to Barney McCool. So what, what is the answer? And it was all possible. Pardon? What is the answer? Or what is the question? The question. The, that, the answer is Mary had little lamb. What I, th I think actually once they established the two short taps were possible, uh, I think they tried speech later on, and I think one of the first words that were uttered on the radio were, Mary had a little lamb. Was that the radio then? I know a version of that which we can't broadcast. I know. Mary had a little lamb. She couldn't stop it grunting. You've heard that one? No. No, I won't repeat that. Jerry but wants you in one. If I end that, we'll be sacked. Hello, good morning. Morning, Jerry. How are you, sir? I am well. How are you? I don't know. I, I, everything seems to be going wrong today. First of all, I got a black eye, and then my, my earphones went to pieces, and then I couldn't hear anybody. And then somebody cut off the woman in another studio. I'm afraid to carry on in case I don't know what's going to happen next. But anyway, well, carry on, see if you can contribute. Can to you them. cast your mind back to yesterday's program? The very final song was a girl, uh, sounded a bit like Kate Bush. Yes. With a local accent. Oh. I can't, re you know, I can't remember what that was, you know, to be honest with you. Oh. Was that one of Michael's songs? I'm not sure. The last one we played yesterday. Yeah, you went out on it because we were running out of time. That's right, that's right. 
I, I, I really can't remember what that and was. I've played her before, but I've never been able to say, phone in and say, right, what's the name of that girl? Or I've never called her name. My God, I can't remember who it was. It wasn't my, when I say it wasn't my choice, I don't mean to say that I didn't like it, but it was Michael who chose that. Which is right. why I can't remember all that well because I remember all the stuff I choose because everyone. Well, I would have it. equated it with your choice because but you I see, Michael and I, Forest Lawn. Michael and I bonded, you know, because uh, we have a similar taste in music, and we went for lunch later. Is I mean, that how you night. got the black eye? No, <laughs> no, 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 I got the. Pl- no, what happened this morning was that I was putting on my headphones and they snapped in some way, right? And one of them hit me in the eye. It's very painful. Yeah, I'm sure. And I think the Lord is telling me not to broadcast today. Go and lie down but, the dark I, I've room. never listened to him before, so why should I start now? Okay, I don't know what that last song was, to be honest with you. It'll come no to me. Some of your listeners? Yes, I'm sure they will. Anyone who knows what it was, there's not much point asking the staff. It's the here. name of the artist, actually, I'm, I'm interested in. I can't remember for the life of me what that was. I can't remember for the life of me. But maybe somebody will remember. Uh, would you? Did you like that? Oh, yes, I did. As okay. I, as I say, I would have put it on a par with Forest Lawn. Isn't that a cemetery somewhere? Music. Pardon? Isn't, isn't that a cemetery somewhere? <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the pygmy music. Oh, sorry. Not, it's not Forest Lawn. It's what Deep Forest. It? Deep Forest, yeah. Forest Lawn is a cemetery. Yeah. You're not well, are you? No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, things aren't working for you today, really, are they? <laughs> no, yesterday was bad, but today's all right. <laughs> all right, anyone who can guess, let me just ask, anyone listening uh, to the program yesterday? Can you still not hear me on the wee green button? I can hear you now, yes. Yeah, but you can hear me on the, the big button. I can hear you on the big button, Why but I can't hear you on the little green button. button. I don't Juliet Turner. Yes, Juliet. It was, of course it was. It was Juliet Turner. How can I forget? It was a song Juliet. called... Juliet Turner, uh, from Oma. It's, it was a song called um, uh, Belfast Central. And it's from her album, which is available in every shop in the world, called Burn the Black Suit. Burn and, the Black Suit. Uh, as a man uh, involved in broadcasting, I advise you to go and buy that today. Right. You'll enjoy that. It's yes, a, I'm, sure, I'm surprised you never heard of her before. I did hear of her before, but I've never had the opportunity to phone in and say, right, I must do something about that. There you oh, are. You're looking for stocking fillers coming up to Christmas? Well, that's a stocking filler if ever there was one. I wouldn't mind finding <laughs> Julia Turner in my stocking. But then again, my stocking has a hole in it. Okay, then, thank you very much, sir. Thanks, sir. Bye. 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 Another thing, too, did There's you see... another call. Did you see James Galway got a knighthood? Oh, you're, you're knocking on the door. Don't worry. I was quite disappointed, actually, because after the conversation the Queen and I had a couple of weeks ago, I was expecting a little tap on my shoulder. Uh, what, are you, what, are you, what are you hoping for? I'm hoping for, well... You'll hardly be sir. No, I, that's too much to yeah. expect. OBE? I think maybe CBE. CBE. Uh, Character of the British Empire. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone involved for my knighthood. I'd like to say that I wish that a lot Would of you people... you take a call from Chucky? I wish that a lot of my friends and colleagues were here to see this day. I was just saying to my wife, I was in Gestad looking at the lake at Lucerne, and I said to myself, I've come a long way from the Shankle. Right, if I were to tell you... Is that any good? That's excellent. If I were to tell you that this man that's on the phone now, his first name is Chucky, could you guess his surname? Let's guess. Black? <laughs> was it one? <laughs> Hello, He's Chucky. On Two. I'd just like to say that I've never regretted playing the flute. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chalky. Hiya, Jerry. Yes, how are you? You know what I was thinking today? I was, do you know when you get a kind of a strange historical perspective? Have you ever had a historical perspective in the morning? No. Well, tell you, can I tell you what happened to me this morning? I had a flash of, uh, of intuition and a flash of the way things used to be. And I think I've become finally a rounded person. I was sitting in my Mercedes, <laughs> and I was looking out at work. Hold, hold on a second, Jerry. Yes? Yes, who's that? Please, we've got to leave. Uh, He's really impressed. Jimmy, come in here a minute. Jim. I'm talking to Jerry Anderson here. Mm-hmm. Hello, sorry Hello. about that. No, that's okay. I, I've lost the moment now. I, oh, I'm not sorry about that, Jerry. No, that's okay. Uh, you treated me um, <laughs> with contempt there. Oh, sorry that's about right. that. That's all right. What can we do for you today? I'll tell you what it is, Jerry. We, we're running out. A grand auction on Sunday. Uh, it's on Sunday, this Sunday coming. It's the date is 17th. Yes. Uh, it's, it's for proceeds for the football club. It's mm-hmm. Crumlin United Football Club. Yes. And the auction will be held in their club rooms in uh, Crumlin. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, sorry, I said to you, 17th, 16th. I don't mind. What do you think? I'm a human calendar? Yeah, I think so, anyway. Okay. You're quite good at other things, too. No, I, I, I haven't memorized <laughs> But there's the a lot of... The, the, the stuff, the stuff with all the proceeds is going to the football club. Uh, and it's toys, clothes, sportswear, and uh, porcelain and stuff. It's quite a big, quite a big selection of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just to give it a bit of a plug, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, then. Uh, so, remind me where it is again. It's at Crumlin United. Yes, okay. Football club. All right. Club rooms. Yes. Crumlin Town, County Andrum, blah, blah, blah. Okay, have you settled on the date yet? It's the 16th of December. <laughs> What's that? And the, 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 the viewings at 11 o'clock. Okay. And the sale starts at 2. All right, that sounds interesting. I wouldn't mind going mm. to that myself. But... Oh, you'd get a wee turn yourself, Jerry. I'm due a wee turn, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a while since I've had a wee turn. I miss it. <laughs> All right, well, I hope it goes well Did, for you. Jerry, the last time I was speaking to you was a very, very long time ago. An old... Uh, pal of yours, Tommy. Tommy, yes, Tommy Kelly, the late Tommy, Tommy Kelly. Kelly. Late Tommy Kelly. Yeah. Was in the Brandywell. Yes. The night you were auctioning on the Greyhound. <laughs> Can you remember that? <laughs> and you were there, were you a Greyhound Ah, uh, yes, I was a Greyhound man. Uh, you're a doggy man? Yeah. You're a man who knows a sheep's head when he sees one? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Thank you very much. Hey, I hope it goes well for you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, bye. I have a letter here. There's call there for you. Can, can you? Can you? I'm so, I'm so obsessed by phone calls. There's more to life than phone calls. Can you still not hear me on the wee? Button? I can't hear you on the wee button. Here's a letter here, which I think. You made. This well, the there's Michael would like to ask you a question. All right then. I just want to read this letter here. This is a serious one. Uh, this man said, recently during the time of children in need, you announced that a local firm of solicitors were, was prepared to offer five hundred pounds of free legal services. For your rickety wheel. Your reaction was not only a mite ungrateful, but bordered on the ungracious, particularly in the light of the comments made regarding the profession from which the donors came. The general inference of your subsequent comments were not merely derisory, but unwarranted, and quite clearly well based on a quiet a quite evident total lack of knowledge of the work that solicitors are required to do, and the professional expertise required in the many and varied matters wherein their services and advice are sought by members of the public, not to mention the length of time as may be required to do so. Your comments reminded me of the old saying about empty vessels making the loudest noise, so perhaps you may bear this in mind before making unsubstantiated statements. Oh, I'm terribly sorry indeed. I realize that solicitors are working their fingers to the bone and earn every penny they get. God. Um, yes, what did you say there? Down. All right, thanks. Bye. Hello? 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 Is, is anybody here anywhere? Yes, Hello? I'm here, Jerry. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm losing the head here. What can we do for you, sir? Jerry, it's Michael here down in Belfast. Yes, Michael. Jerry, I was listening to your show yesterday, and I was uh, hearing how that John Bennett fellow was giving you a hard time about your yellow suit. It's not yellow. That you, well, I know that. It's a beautiful, it's supposedly Italian-made, light tan. It, was, it, is, it is Italian, yes. I was wondering how John Bennett knew you were wearing your yellow suit yesterday morning when you were down in Derry and he was down in Belfast. No, you see, this is why he was able to see me, because I was actually there. In well, you were in Belfast yesterday. Yesterday, yes. No, oh, there you are now. That's okay. That, that, that kind of stopped you in your tracks, didn't it? It did, Jerry, stop me in my tracks. And me being an insurance man, I'm not often stopped in my tracks. I know, and this has taken the wind out of your sails. But don't worry Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. And you're probably, I'm not saying used to that. you're probably saying to yourself, what will I say now? <laughs> oh, no, 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 I know exactly what I'm going to say now because I've phoned for you for the last two weeks. Right. To leave a message for you and you've never phoned me back. I'm sorry, I don't think I got those messages. Well, I spoke to you about three weeks ago about villas in Italy. Oh, yes. You remember? Yes, I do. So yes, I do, are, of man. course, yeah. Oh, I, I should have phoned you back. Yeah, that's right. I you will phone have. you back. Listen, I will phone you back. <laughs> you leave your number with the man here. I will indeed. I'm up in Derry today, so I am, so I'll maybe I'll, run into you later on. You I'll, never know. I'll give you, I have to go down and wait for the washing machine man today. All right, John. You, you may not be interested now. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you a little ring. <laughs> no bother. Okay, thank you, sir. All the best. See you again. Bye. 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 Do you know the priest that you have? Yeah. And you go and stay with him in Florida. Yeah. He's my priest. Mark wants you in three. I got a priest too. You have not. Except he doesn't know my collar. All right. Would you talk to Mark in three? Which priest are you thinking of uh, topping up for a holiday this year? I'd probably go back to Florida. Yeah. Which priest is that? It's, it's me. You, should, you should try some ministers. It's me, Orlando priest. You should try some ministers. They have great houses. Have they? Ah. 
I'm, don't I'm, working, I'm working on it already. Don't be just staying in the one religion. I see Bishop Mahaffey immediately after you the program. You speak to the odd rabbi. All right. <laughs> Make it Marks a holiday on in three. Israel. What? Mark's on three. What's very strange for somebody to be on three? What's wrong with Because them? I didn't know whether Michael was on one or two. So I didn't know which one to cancel. I so rather than... Oh, no, you did the right thing. Uh, under fire, I think you're cool. Yes. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hi, Jerry. How yes, are hello. You? Good man. Here, Jerry, I want you to do a bit of... Uh, Sussing out for me. I'm after a wee 50 cc quad motorbike for the wee fella for Christmas. A 50 cc quad motorbike. Yeah, you know the wee four wheelers. Yes, yes, I'm aware of them. Yes. I cannot buy. You know, for a sort of there's loads of brand new ones, but you don't want a new they're one. They're big money. <laughs> but big money indeed. Yeah. How much are they? They're six, seven hundred quid, aren't they? Oh, they're seven hundred quid, all right. Well, listen. Uh, where where do you live, roughly? In Round Dromore. Dromore. Well, which Dromore is that? Down, County Down. County Down. There's, there's, there's different, uh, different drummers, you know. There's one up in Tyrone and uh, all that. So you're down there. So you're looking for a 50cc quad yes. motorbike? Yes, a wee quad. A wee quad. Said, but love one before, you know, for Christmas. Or, yeah, yeah, you know. preferably second hand. You don't want a new yeah, one. Yeah, well, second hand would do all right. But, he's, you know, he's a, he's a believer, so a good, you know, sprightly good one, you know. Yeah, you don't want one that's hanging together. Yeah, yeah. You want one in good condition. Yeah. Okay, anyone out there got a 50cc quad uh, but a motorbike, is yeah, it? Yeah, so we like we. I know, I've, se I've seen them. Yeah, they're good. Those. Yeah, they're oh. good. They're good. Right. Now he's he's, he's down for one I have, I have hunted hand low for a wee good second hand one. Can't get one. All right then. Okay. All right. So anyone out there can help the man. Give us a ring here at oh eight four five nine five 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 six seven eight. This is turned into swap shop. That's just what it's like. No okay. You look like no ladmans. Maybe a bit there. No, 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 here, no, 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 no. I would accept that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if anybody rings, we'll put them on to you, okay? Good man. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye. Uh, Bye. 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 There's no word about Christmas at all this year. There's Emmett. Emmett really wants a wee bit of help. What? Could you help this man here? He asked You're obsessed you, with phone calls. He asked for your help before, and you didn't get him any help. And There's more to life than phone calls. You One. should try and broaden your life a little. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes, what seems to be the trouble, sir? Is there any chance of getting a wee bit of help on my request? What's that request? Um, I wrote a letter into the both fields about a fortnight ago. Look on the signature from an ex Man United player, Chris McGrath. Oh, I think I saw that and threw that away. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for throwing it away. Yeah, I'm sorry for no. throwing it away. Well, what, what, no. Tell me again what you want. It's, um, I've got an autograph collection in the house with over 450 autographs in it. Yes. Past and present Manchester United players. Yes. And there's some dead, okay? And the only, the only one that I can think of locally is Chris McGrath. That maybe the listeners could help me out with. Chris McGrath? Yeah. Chris McGrath, I think I saw that. Chris McGrath played for Northern Ireland, didn't he? He did, yeah. You read it out on the programme. I did, of course. And not, not, to, not to be confused with the other McGrath, the Paul. fellow from Dublin, Paul McGrath. Yes, well, this Chris McGrath was Northern Irish. Yes, yes. And he played for not, or Tottenham Hotspur as well. Yes, yes. And I can't get him. I've asked Sammy McElroy personally, and I've asked David Sadler, who runs the former Manchester United appreciation you know like the ex yes there's yes sure. thing at old trafford yes and um, he's not a member of that he's gone into obscur obscurity yeah i so, don't know so you're trying to trace him um no well i'm trying to get any kind of signature to, to stick into my book okay right so well that shouldn't be too difficult to do somebody may have his autograph somewhere and probably doesn't realize you know what they yeah. have it. or if they do realize they have it it's no not much good to them all right, then, so that's the missing link as far as you're concerned. Yeah, well, just if any of you are listening to has it, I've a load of spare autographs, you know, I could swap, or yeah. else I could just buy it straight off him. Okay, then, fair enough. Chris McGrath? Chris McGrath, North, ex Northern Ireland. Who else did he play with? Uh... As far as I know, he played for Crusaders. Okay. In the North here. And he played in America, too, but. But that, that, doesn't that, that doesn't count. No, no. no. <laughs> All right, then. We'll try and get that All for right, you. Many okay. Thanks. All right. Bye bye, Derek. Okay. Bye. Bye, bye. 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 The man said bye to you. Bye bye. Stuart McElhern and Cully Backey. And if the man asks for Bryce Stewart, he'll get that quad. What's that again? Stuart McElhern and Cully Backey. Yes. And if he asks for Bryce Stewart, he'll okay. get the quad. Ask for Bryce Stewart. Yeah, and call you back. I bet you're not going to do a, an impression of Ronnie Flanagan today. No. Go on. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Stop it. 
I had no idea. That shilling was in the meter when I no, put my stop. head in. Stop it. Um, now, stop that. We will be... You had no sense of humour, that's all. You used to be fun. They'll be... You used to be... I used to laugh. And you, you, you've just got so serious now that you're, you, you've, you've found Did that Did you see phone. the Blitz programme on last night? Again? You used to be funny. You used to be good fun Did to be with. Now it? you're just an old curmudgeon. Do you know what a curmudgeon is? Are you taking us out for Christmas <laughs> drinks? <or laughs> Let me just think about that. Uh, no, I'm not. Are you? No, I'm not, no. I'm not taking you out for Christmas drinks. You should have a Christmas party. The Why show should up? have... Your show should have a Christmas yeah, party. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, d let me think about it, will you? I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Okay? My mother and father are great listeners, says Ruby and Tommy Burgess. And I was wondering if possible, could you mention them in your program on the 20th of December? As they are married 49 years and would be very grateful if you could. I just opened that envelope there and read that. I should have really read it before I read it because they don't want me to read it out until the 20th of December. It's too late. Here we run out of breath there. I'm organising a Christmas party next year. Well, I'm not going to. Charlie Lansborough. Oh, I'm not. Oh, great. I'm not going to. I wouldn't go to any party that you're at. Look at the news. It's 11 o'clock. We'll be back after that. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to the programme. BBC Radio Foil and BBC Radio Ulster with Jerry Anderson. Right, you have to say hello. Uh, please wish my sister Angela McGlone of Mountain View Road a happy birthday on Friday the 14th of December. It's a little early. It's tomorrow's the 14th of December, isn't it? That's from my sister Martha. She's your number one fan and listens every day. She even rang me from Spain in August. Oh, she even rang me from Spain and August, meaning me. If possible, please play Van Morrison and Linda Day Lewis as well. Well, maybe you shouldn't do that. Why don't you love me like you used to do? <laughs> For the birthday surprise, I'm taking I'm taking on Thursday night to see May. I'm taking her on Thursday night to see May McFedders in the Panto. We'll be in the second row. Do you think that's a good idea? The further away you are from the stage, the better. In the with May McFedders, don't do anything unusual. Don't go to the toilet or anything. Don't wear anything that is unusual. Make sure that you're absolutely anonymous because if you do anything unusual at all or wear anything unusual, May McFedders will spot you, and she will give you hassle all night. So there will be tales to be told. Please, please don't let me down, as this will make her day. That's from Martha. If you're in need of a wee hot whiskey, she says. Drop into Carr's Corner. We'll be happy to give you one. You know what I mean. Well, there's an invitation if I ever heard one. I must just put that on the pending tray. And Davy Madison sent me a very interesting thing. Davy's our regular poet. So he has put a book together himself. And he said I should give it to Geordie. I'm not going to give that to Geordie. Geordie will throw it in the corner and the ferret will sleep on it. I'm going to keep this. This is a collection of all the poems that he's written for this program. Oh, I'm going to keep this. Can't give that to Geordie. He won't appreciate it. Uh, anyway, we'll discuss that later. Here's a poem that uh, Davy has written for the Christmas season. It's called Christmas Trees A Crowd. Get it? Little Christmas Trees A Crowd. Little humour. I detest it when she says these words to me. Darling, would you put up the Christmas tree? You know I'm not good with the decoration and balls, and I'm always afraid in case the thing falls. And looking at me as if I'm half-witted, she'll say sometimes the light don't work and bulbs need fitted. Also, I never seem to put them where they're best suited, and I may get a shock or even, yes, electrocuted. Now, to tell you the truth, sometimes I think the worst, hoping that she would during the moments I've cursed both her and that tree, because that's one bloody pain. At this time of the year, she drives me insane. She says I can't put it up. That's what she says. But when it's going up, she interferes in various ways. Put the wee snowman there. No, put it there. Don't put it there. I don't like it like that. Don't stick it just anywhere. I hate the friggin' Christmas tree. It wouldn't be bloody well up if it was left to me, as it causes more rows as to where it should go if I had my way out the window. It would go. She demands it should be up for December the 7th, not the 1st, the 4th, or even the 11th. It must be erected for Kaylee's birthday, and it must look brilliant in every possible way. I've always thought that a tree was for Christmas time, but it's not up for Kaylee. It's a serious crime, and it also must be perfectly decorated, as, or there's a right to blow up seemingly fated. I told her the story about the fairy being up on high, stuck on top of the tree, and the reason why? Because the fairy pestered Santa. Where to place the tree? But to all his suggestions, the fairy wouldn't agree. The fairy argued and bickered with the old gent so kind that she eventually drove him out of his mind until poor Santa had enough, then took this fit and told the fairy just where to stick it. But she didn't believe me and said I was crude, as Father Christmas would never, ever be that rude. I'd made up this story, which would make Santa mad 
and I'll get no present because I'm bad. And there's a, there's a drawing underneath, which I can't describe for you, but it's very funny. It's also extremely rude, and we don't go in for rudeness in this program. This is why we got where we are today. Thank you. What? I've got a lovely card here. Oh, I'd like to thank you. all the people who sent me <laughs> Oh, he's a, he's a bad one. Aye. He is, indeed. Let me just turn that off. I'd like to thank all the nice people who sent cards. I'm getting lots and lots of cards. And I have to tell you, I don't deserve them. Because nobody knows what a puke I am when I'm not on the microphone. No, no, no. That's, thank you very much for those. I, I really appreciate that. So many of you. I, I think I may, may, I may name some people. I can't help myself. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yes, how are you? Sorry for keeping you. You're all right. I'm nearly over asleep here. I know. It's pe- this program has that effect on many people. <laughs> It's a somnambulistic. You're saying there you don't like to be rude in this program? No, we don't like. We don't go in for rudeness, no. You're right. Well, why then do you use the Lord's name in vain? It's... Oh, you're not one of them, are you? <laughs> are you one of those? Yes, I was. How one did of you those. get through? <laughs> Hold on a minute. How did he get through? He, he didn't say he was. Ach, he sneaked he up on us. I suppose we'll cool. have to deal with it. All right, well, okay. I'm sorry. Right. No, I, just, I, I really enjoy your program, but I would love you to tell not take the Lord's name in vain, because you say you don't like to uh, annoy people, but it annoys me by doing so. All right, then, OK. But another wee thing I'm on for, I was on one time to you and I was talking about your hair. It looked like the back end of a, a duck. Oh, do you gee. remember that now? Yeah, thank you. I, I do remember but, that. But, How could I forget? I rung in the three or four times to apologise, but nobody ever bothered saying tell you about it. We don't accept apologies. Well, well I, once apolo- I apologise now. Once the words are out of your mouth, they can't be taken back. <laughs> No, I accept your apology on behalf of the BBC and on behalf of my head. Right. Thank you very much indeed. And another thing. Yes. I've also rung in a few times to ask, is there anybody out there would know where to purchase or find a penny farthing bicycle? A penny farthing bicycle? Yeah. Mm, that might be hard to get, you know. You think so? Uh, it'd be hard to get one in good condition, I suppose. Uh, uh-huh. It'd be hard to get uh-huh. anyone at all because, I mean, you know, they, as, <laughs> they don't grow on trees. No, a penny really farthing. Good. Well, you, you, I would say you'd probably have to pay money for a thing like that. Oh, well, I would believe so. Like, I'd understand all that. You know, because uh, as, the ta- as the years go on, the penny farthing gets more valuable. I mean, oh, let's uh, face it, you know, it's, they've been around for a long time. It's like yourself. Indeed, yes. Uh, the, old, the, old, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. That's true. <laughs> okay, then. You, ha- you haven't played the, the Randall Knife past while. Well. Oh, do you like that? That's one of your best tunes. I really like that. But from uh, Guy Clark. Uh, yeah, yeah, very, very good. Glad you appreciate good. that. You were also send me a copy of John Wayne stuff one time, but you never done so either. <laughs> <laughs> Did I not? No. Well, you know, what can I say? Did I promise that I would? Yes, you did indeed. Bleep, get, let's take that man's name. Mr. Take Coyle. Why? Why? Sorry? Because I want to send him something. You I promised to, s- to send him something yeah. before. Right, OK, so you have his phone number. And this gives me an opportunity not to send it again. Right, so... No, could... if I remember, if you'd make a little note of that, you know, and a little Stephen. post-it note... And leave okay. it with me, and uh, it will remind me sometime during the course. Are you not listening? To, are you listening to me at all? Yes. Uh, right. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Yes. Um, Fo- phone Stephen after the show. You will phone Stephen after the show. Is that Stephen here now? Yes. Okay, well, why don't you just text Stephen's address? There's no need for me to phone him. Well, I mean, not Stephen. that I don't want to phone him, but there's no need for me to annoy him. Why doesn't Stephen just give you... Is that so difficult? Well, why doesn't Stephen just tell us his address now? He doesn't want to. He probably doesn't want to give his address out on the air. I'll well, we'll phone him after the show. Listen, why don't you talk to Stephen now when I'm finished? Then but I have other things to do. No, the, the other things that you the, no, what you do is what you you help me in this program. Yes, and this is and I am helping me. you now by telling you that Morris is waiting to talk to you. I don't care about Morris. It's Stephen I care about. Yes, because Stephen is whom I'm talking to at the moment. But I'll ring. We can ring Stephen after the program. You ring Stephen after the program. He won't ring you, Stephen. You realise really that he won't. And it's not if he doesn't ring you, it's not my fault that you don't get it. I tried. <laughs> you heard me asking him to ask you I your address. You heard me asking him? Uh-huh. It's out of my hands. Right. right. Okay, if he rings you, I'll send you that. Okay? Right. That's fine. Thanks very much. Bye. All the best. Bye. Bye. No, Morris. Right. What's so, what's so special about Morris that you're prepared to dismiss other people so that Morris gets his stoke in? <laughs> his stoke in? What did I say? <laughs> I don't what does know that what mean? It... Steak? What, what did I mean to say? Get his spoken. neb. Right. Spoken. That's the word oh, I'm looking for. Right. I was thinking of nab there for a moment. Get his nab in. But that's not right, is it? I know. Where is he on three? No. Right. Two you're, or you're one. Very fun. Tell Jarlene to stop shouting. Two or one. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Yes. 
How you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Good man. I have the question to Mr. Coyle's answer. Oh, good. Yes, the, the answer the, uh, was Mary had first, a little lamb. Yes, it's the first ever gramophone recording uh, by Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Yes, I learned back in my film on Saturday morning, BBC Two. You see, this is what happens when you're on the dole. You learn all this stuff. Oh, you so, don't work on Saturday, Jerry. Oh, well, some many people do. So Some people have to need other work. Did Thomas Edison, uh, did he recite the Mary Had a Little Lamb? She yes, couldn't stop it grunting? I think he said Mary Had a Little Lamb. Ha, ha. Only two has. Uh, I don't know why he said ha, ha, but he here, did. Here in Ulster we use the three has. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Obviously he's uh, not from here. All right then, okay, so that's the answer to his question, or the question to his answer. I believe so. Okay, thank you for that. No, no. Bye. Love the show. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What a useless piece of information. There's another call. There's a man coming in to fix you. When I first took up the flute, little did I know I'd be called to the palace to be knighted by Her Majesty the Queen. And the Duke of Edinburgh was there as well. There's a call. I'm bringing it back to Switzerland. And I was talking to Horrible Van Caravan the other day from the Belfast. For... <laughs> so, 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 it's a man sneaking up. I thought that was an assassin there. No, I told you. A man the... sneaked up behind He's me. He scared your... me. He wants to take your... There's a lot of button. people coming in here. This is for flagship broadcasters only. It's getting so that anyone will come in. Oh, there's a milkman. When did you get him in? He's trying to help. There's a fella cleaning the windows. Get him in. He's from no, it's Belfast. Okay. No, sorry, I don't want to hear him. It's fine. Man's pressing the button. That's it. That's it. Okay. Is that it fixed? No, it, it's, don't, don't worry. You worry about. That's why you're in there and I'm in here. Because you worry about things that aren't important. It doesn't strike me as being but important. But you see, I am the link between you and the, 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 the public. I know, but this is. Well, They're speaking I, through I, me. I, I know, but you. that's where it usually goes wrong. You see, whenever I can't talk to you, things usually go far better. When I talk to you, I get annoyed and angry. There's that's a the man way it goes. I know there's a man on one. I know that. I'm just waiting until I'm ready to talk to him. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. How are I'm you? I'm sorry for snapping. It's not your fault. You're quite all right. No problem. Okay. Hi, my name is Jerry Marshall, and I work for Goal the Third World Organization. I was actually speaking to you this time last year, Jerry. Yes. Uh, and I just wanted to bring to the attention of your, your good self and all the listeners that uh, Goal is holding a, a fun event at Stormont on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we're asking uh, all your listeners if they're interested to turn up and they can walk or run or jog or crawl uh, a mile for goal. And uh, it takes place between half past ten and half past twelve. And people can turn up at any time between those two times. Mm. Um, it's just a great way to, you know, show your support for the, uh, the developing world. And, uh, Jerry, I can think of a better way to work up an appetite for the Christmas dinner. Mm. So I just want to bring that to the attention of all your listeners. You're, you're, it's an uphill battle for you then, aren't you? Because it's a, the fun and storm are two words that don't normally associate it. <laughs> well, maybe we can see this as the new format for, for going forward here in, in Northern Ireland, you know. <laughs> All right, then. So, okay, so, so, so where, 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 tell me when again. It's at Storm of the State yeah. on Christmas morning, uh, any time between half past ten and half past twelve. And all people need to do is turn up and uh, you can go for a bit of a dander. For those who are a li little bit more energetic, they can run it or they can jog it. For those who perhaps have had a few uh, jollifications or a few tibbles the night before, well, they can crawl around it if they wish. And uh, if they want, they can donate some money on the day and it'll be gratefully received. OK, then. Fair enough. I uh, hope you have a good turnout. We do. We, we did it last year, Jerry, and we had a turnout of a few hundred people. So this year we're really hoping that people will come out and support us, you know, because uh, we all know, I mean, Christmas is a, is a special time of year for us all. But it's, uh, you know, for millions of children throughout the developing world, there is no Christmas. There's no presents, no trees, no carols. So we feel it's appropriate that on Christmas morning, uh, people can simply turn up and show a bit of solidarity for those throughout the, uh, the rest of the world. All right, then. OK. Lovely. Good man. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much, Jerry. Bye. 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 I'd be afraid to turn that up in Christmas. That book's for you. Pardon? That book's for you. What book? The book that you got this morning. Oh, I thought he wanted to give it to Jordy. Well, no, I didn't no, read no, it. no, there's a mistake. Jordy has got his version, and that's for you. This is very nice. It's too good to give to Jordy. No, Jordy has got his. <laughs> you don't want to waste it on him. Do you know what I think? You talk to Barbara. I think it's very dangerous to, to jog on Christmas morning. It's like turn up, tune in, and drop dead. Yeah. Do you see if I if I jogged on Christmas morning, I think I would be the finish. Did you ever jog? Never. I jogged. You did not. Did I did. I did must you? say, I was a jogger. Did you Did you try? I mean, did you try it one day? No, I tried it for a, for a, for a period of time. How long did you jog? I was jogging. I would say for the best part of a year, and then I wised up. 
Because I realised that... Uh, Your knee started to go. I, I've got knee trouble I, as a result of it, I think. I, but, oh, but I, I never knew this. I never oh, saw yes. you as a I jogger. have a knee. I, I, I've seen it. Yeah. And uh, how... How how far would you have run a day? Uh, not at, very. At I, I wasn't a, I wasn't a, a distance person. But oh, what I'm not I implying that my, you were. No, what I found myself doing yes. was timing myself and going <laughs> faster and faster, and it became a little race. You understand? This could be the origin of your heart trouble today. You know, they sometimes you drop dead and then you're okay yes, the next it day. Could, could well have been. Yeah. You see, I never did anything. I am a great fan of John Mortimer's. Do you know what happened to him? Yeah. Do you know John Mortimer, the writer? No. You don't, do you? Yeah, but what happened to him? Uh, he was brought, he was, he's, he's not well these days, but he's a man in his 70s, but he's okay. I was talking to him the other day, actually, in Buckingham Palace. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I just happened to mention to him, he said his health was quite good. But then I read a little quote in the newspaper uh, just after that. Apparently, he was quoted as saying that his doctor had, had said to him, uh, Mr. Mortimer, could you tell me, uh, do you get breathless after exercise? And he said, I don't know. I've never done any. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm kind of like that. I've never done any kind of exercise. I heard you talk to Michael yesterday and tell Michael, confess to Michael that you had no friends. I don't have any friends. Yeah. No. Michael was very good yesterday, by the way. I thought he was, yeah. Yes. We had a very nice lunch. We went to Cafe Arrow. You've You're never paid. been there. They don't let your sort in. But it, it was very, very nice. Lovely food, I recommend. Who paid? Yes. I did. Out of my own pocket. <laughs> of course, uh, uh, no... <laughs> Why do, you, why do you chuckle You'll be so? filling in your expenses, she No, I don't do that. I'm not like the rest. Mm. And don't chuckle. Uh, actually, Michael was very nice. Michael offered to pay for it. I said, just give me the cash. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a very nice... Would you talk first, to Barbara? That's the first time. No, you never met Michael. No. That's the first time I met him was yesterday, and I, I, I have to say I liked him. I liked him. He's a very nice guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a little nervous at the start. Yeah, he was, he was, I, no, he was, he was overwhelmed by my charisma. Do you know when people meet me for the first time, they're, 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 they're knocked yeah. back? Yeah. You know, because of the, you know, the force of my personality. But then after five or ten minutes, you get used to my charm. Why you is get there used a, to my celebrity. Why is there a man standing beside you wearing headphones? I don't know. I, I'll ask him. Are you okay? He's all right, he says. Just, he may be from, you know, maybe one of the bosses. He may well be. He may be wondering what we're doing here. <laughs> because there's, there's talk about what we do here. Nobody knows what Would it is. Would you talk to Barbara? No. Barbara's there and one. Hello, Barbara. Two, 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 two. Hello? Good morning, Jerry. I'm sorry for keeping you. That's all right. I wanted to say a Merry Christmas to you and Sean first and all your staff. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. that all the staff can hear it. But now I've got a complaint. That's okay. We don't mind that. What is wrong with the mic today? I'm getting you coming through on the radio. I'm getting Sean coming through. And I'm getting Geraldine shouting in the background. The whole thing's a whole mishmash. Well, could you not get those mechanics down on the BBC to get their finger out and get some work done? The mechanics that's standing what, beside them. That's what the man's doing in here, trying to sort <laughs> the mess out. You see, if I'd have been down here every, before half ten, this would never have happened. I know, Jerry. But, but was, then you I see... You see, last week when you were away, yeah. the show was brilliant. Sean done an excellent job. Listen, uh, I'm afraid uh, we're running out of time here. I'd love to talk to you further. But here, hold on. Now, don't cut me off. I've got something to say. Yes? I want to wish my sister Winnie Shuttle a happy birthday for the 15th. Winnie Shuttle? Winnie Shuttle. A happy birthday for the 15th. Oh, last year, she told everybody I was 60, yes. but she's 60. And this she, week. You, you weren't 60. No, I wasn't. I'm the younger one. All oh, right. She keeps telling you that everyone that you're older than she is. Yes. The old bitch. There's no need for that. So I would want to wish her a happy 60th birthday. Okay, then. For the 15th of December. Okay. And also my little granddaughter is four on Christmas Eve. Mm. So I want you to wish her a happy birthday. Yes. Because later on in life, she'd be interested to hear your voice when I'm, when I'm dead. Yes. You can, you can and listen, I'm... you've got to play John Wayne for me and get the whole well, what series. Would you, what would you like? The one you played this morning. No, hold on. No, we'll play a different one. That was only him advertising. Well, here, you promised me, too, that you'd do a series with all the John Wayne ones. Well, we do one now. Hold all on, right. What have we got here? What do you... Uh, let's see now what we've got here. We've got... Uh, we played this the other day. Davy Crockett's Alamo speech. Right. We don't like that one. 
What about an American boy grows up? I always liked that one. Right, well, we'll take your choice. But okay. next week when I'm listening, I want you to play a couple more, and I'll ring in and tell you the morning when I'm listening. All right, let me just check if this is the right one. Let me just check. Oh, God. Look, this thing's not working again. I don't know. It's this Japanese stuff. I don't know how they're ever going to do the World Cup. They can't even make a simple machine. Oh, there it is. Okay, let me just check if this is the right one. Just, I'm just listening to it now at the moment. All right, Jerry. I'm just listening to it at the moment. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. American Boy Grows Up, you'll like this one. All right, so I'll have to hang up then and go and listen to it. Yes, hang up and go and listen to it. All right, many thanks, I'll talk to you again. Bye. A man phoned there now asking me a question, and I haven't a clue what he's talking about. Well, let's try and figure out what it so is. So I now put this question to you. What does he say? Why is it more expensive for a, a girl to have a headache than a gentleman? He says... At, in certain establishments, mm -hmm. when gentlemen go into the, the oh the toilet, it costs him three pound fifty to get his headache cured. Right. But in the ladies, it costs okay. the ladies four pound. What is it? What's he on about? The machines in toilets. Do you know the machines they have? I don't know. I know you don't go into those places, but do you know the machines they have. Sometimes you get things you know, for the weekend. And all the things you get, uh, little toothpaste. Why would you want aspirin for the weekend? You can, well, let's just gloss over that. Uh, you, there are different machines, ones which you don't talk about, and there are other ones in which you get aspro and aspirin. And what he's saying basically is when you go into these ablution houses and you find a machine, uh, it costs more for the man to get the headache tablets. No, it costs more for the woman. It costs more for the woman. I don't know, one way or the other. I don't know, I, can, I can't explain that. I can't explain that. Who am I? The Oracle? They must have. They must I don't have, know. They, their headaches must be more severe than ours. Well, they get them more often. They they get them every Saturday night for a start. Do you know that? Don't There's you? a call on one. Yes, of course. Uh, I've got a nice call, a uh, nice card here from. Uh, I've got a nice call here as well from uh, Declan Ford. What a lovely Christmas card! I'm just going to read out this little verse that's on the card. I don't normally read verse out from Christmas cards. Just before you read it, could you give details of the John Wayne CD and is it readily available? It's not readily available at all. You can't get it. Okay, sorry. This is called A Cornamuck Christmas. In a Cornamuck cottage under Cornamuck snow, slouched by the fire with fiddle and bow, he scrapes out the tunes from a lifetime ago and his music meanders sweet, easy and low. A march for his father, a jig for his mother, a hornpipe or two for his sisters and brothers. And in his mind's eye, they all dance together while he and his fiddle play homage together. A candle drips tears and the tilly lamp dims. Musty warmth rises and the silence begins as a veil is drawn gently another year ends and uh, Cornamuck Christmas is over again eh? that's some card thank you Declan Ford I really appreciate that Declan a very talented guy and I should play more of his stuff but I'm just so bad I don't play anybody Betty said to remind me about playing Tinkerman's Daughter there's another example I have to play Tinkerman's Daughter before Christmas can you read the Rubber Man poem I've been asked to do that a number of times too but never did for Bert McCormick and his staff, happy Christmas and thanks for the help. There you are, Bert McCormick. I always recommend him. Bally, Bally Clare. Is it Bally Clare or Bally Castle? Ah, right. Bally I Clare. can't remember the difference between them. Is it Robert Bally Mitchum's Clare? brother. Bob Mitchum. Happy Christmas and thanks for the help from Mr. and Mrs. Conlon in Belfast. And hello to uh, Tommy Corrigan, who is retiring today from Hanson Sego in Carrie Duff. That's from all his workmates. I'm sure they'll miss him. And, uh, oh, I've got so, many, so much stuff to read now, I'm almost afraid to, to even start. Oh, here's something that maybe someone out there could help us with. It's uh, seldom we look for any help. But we have a number of prizes for our, our rickety wheel that we have to deliver. The two in particular. Uh, one has to go to Bangor, and the other has to go to Lurgan. And it's not that it's bulky, it's just we can't post these because they're, we, you know, they're, uh, they, they would be, they'd be broken, no matter what. So any lorry drivers uh, who are passing through Derry Stoke, London Derry, who would prepare to drop us off a parcel in Bangor or Lurgan. Uh, we'd much appreciate it if you'd give us a call because we don't want to spend BBC money putting them on trains and stuff like that because it's a waste. And anyway, it's more money for drink for our Christmas parties. So it's anyone who can um, send a, bring a parcel. No, seriously, anyone who can bring a parcel to Bangor and, uh, or Lurgan and deliver it personally, it'd be nice. Give us a ring here at 08459 555678 or after the programme, just the regular number on Radio Foil. What is the number of Radio what, what's Foil? What's this got to do with Robert Mitchum's brother? Oh, God, what the, the stuff that goes on in there. Triviality. It's, uh, I don't know what Radio Foil's number is. It's, um, I really don't know. 
I just I think it's 0287137860. Oh, oh, oh. I think it's that. I'm not sure. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello? Yes, sorry. Sorry for keeping you so. I know you've been hanging for a long time. I don't mind. It's your bill. So it is. That's right. We always bring you back. See, one of the things that we, uh, we must stress here is that when anyone rings here, we always ring them back, don't we? Well, we, in, in your case, don't we do that? You did. Yes. You did. I'm and then, me. so if anybody, if we keep anybody hanging on, it's the BBC pays for it. And that's less wine for the lads at Christmas. Oh, well. Anyway. Less headache. Yes. Well, then again, uh, women do have a lot of headaches on a Saturday night, don't they? I rarely have a headache. Well, do you ever have one on a Saturday night? Do you ever have a headache? Did you ever... Now, can I ask you a personal question? I don't know. Maybe you're... Are you I mar- may not answer. Are, you don't have to. Are you married at all? Uh, none of your business. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, if you were married, would you pretend you had a headache on a Saturday night? No, my husband would probably have to pretend he had the headache. Oh, you're one of those then. That's a joke. <laughs> it's not a joke. No, it came out of you, so it must be true. <laughs> no, there's no... I, I think the worst thing a woman can do is pretend she has a headache on a Saturday night. Because men know that they have headaches. Men, no. Because if a woman had a headache, she'd be talking about it all night. Why suddenly, when the wing comes over? Do you know when the wing, com- do you know when the wing comes over at night? Uh-huh. Do you know what I'm talking about? The wing, no, the heavy oil wing comes over, and the smell of drink, and oh, my head! You know, why didn't she mention it before the wing came over? It's only the wing came over and made it again. I, I know you don't want to get down this road. No, I want to okay. go down a different road. Right, you go down your road. Well, I was ringing, ringing the boast line. Because I wanted to boast to you about... Oh, the boast line. line. There's a yes. special number for that. Yes. No, but I also wanted to say, I think you're psychic. Because I rang... I've met you once or twice. You yes. Think, which you maybe don't remember or don't know my voice. But I've met you once or twice. And oh, then, no, I wouldn't know anyone's voice, no. Where, where, did we, where did we meet? We met... I'll whisper it because it's a bit embarrassing. To, but it was on backstage at the Waterfront Hall. Oh. Right? Yes, oh, yes. And um, at a big concert. Mm. Right? Mm. But I was ringing because I heard John Wayne's voice yes. earlier on in the show. Yes. And um, I was laughing to myself at your impersonation of James Galway. <laughs> and I heard John Wayne's voice and I thought, my son is the golden boy of Hollywood, but the Hollywood of one L. So I thought, I'm going to ring up Jerry Anderson and boast to him that I have a son. Yes. Because the last time we met, I only had two children. And now I have three. I hope you're not blaming me for the third. Absolutely not. But just, let's just get that, get that out of the way. Oh. <laughs> oh okay, right. <laughs> No, that would be impossible. <laughs> what way does your mind work? I don't know. It's horrible, I know. Gnarled, no, twisted. Or maybe I should say, what way does your listeners' minds work? I don't know. I think we're leaving them all behind. So I was ringing for a number of reasons. And then, whenever I was waiting on the line, you see, to mm-hmm. get through, mm-hmm. what came on but... Who was that reading the piece? Was it John Wayne or... That was John Wayne, of course. John Wayne, about my son. Yes, and I said, Good Lord, that Jerry Anderson boy. I knew all along. I knew, th- I knew you wanted it. You're telepathic. Telepathic is another word I choose to use, yes. So I, I filled up, I have to say, it's very emotional, this mm-hmm. is John Wayne. Well, especially Talking that one. About that, his son. When he goes boom, boom, boom on that big bass drum. Yes. That's a line it's I like. It's a cracker. It's really a cracker. That's from an album called America, Why I Love Her. And it's a track, it's called uh-huh. An American Boy Grows Up. Uh-huh. And it's very hard to get. And I don't think you can get it. It's, it, it's deleted. But, what a uh, shame. What a shame. Could I, could I throw in something Not else really. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry for, for interrupting. Sure. But there's there's a man, Kevin, on two, right. will give you the information that you need. Oh. And, well, could I quickly this... say before I go? No, you're not going. Something, I'm not going? Oh, good. No, the man's no. going to give you the information. No, you're not. You stay, you stay, oh, I see. You, you stay I here. See. Okay. It's not over until it's over. Remember that. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Oh, right. It's not over until I tell That's you to me, go. not me, is it? I don't know, I are you? Sing? Are you, uh, what's your, what's your name? You, Judith, is it? Judith. Are you fat, Judith? No, but, um, you know, you put on a wee bit of weight after you have a baby. You do indeed. I put on a little after I had mine. <laughs> There's well, someone on the... very quick. <laughs> There's someone on the line here. Hello? Hello, Jerry. Do you, have you something that interests you? Yeah, uh, yesterday's Daily Telegraph carried the obituary of John Mitchum, right? John Mitchum? Yeah, the brother I, I of Robert. T- I heard you talking to the Oracle in there about that. Right. John now, Mitchum. The, 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 the LP or CD is called America Why I Love Her. Yes. And apparently it was re-released in March 2001. You're not serious. By a label called Big John Records. Big John Records? Yeah. Oh, well, there we are then. It's re-released. And the idea was Forrest Tucker's. Forrest Tucker, I remember him, the old actor. Right. Apparently, um, 
he suggested to Mitchum that he get um, John Wayne to record it. Now, do you know why he did that? I know why. Right, know it why. says here, apparently John Mitchum's son, Jack... Uh, produced the album um, and, and wrote the songs. He wrote Why Are You Marching, Son? He wrote them all. Did he? Yeah, he wrote the whole album. Oh. And he, uh, he... I thought on this it give the idea that uh, John Mitchum wrote some... Oh, no, no, sorry, no, Robert Mitchum's son. Yeah. No, which one? Which one's he? Right. John Mitchum was <laughs> Robert Mitchum's brother. Yes. Right? Jack is the son of John Mitchum. Yes. All right? Right, but it's actually Robert Mitchum's son who wrote most of the songs on this. Am I right in assuming that? Uh, let's see what it says here. Tucker was so moved that he asked Mitchum to recite it for John Wayne. Now, I assume that's John Mitchum. And the, 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 the one Why Are You Marching was written by Mitchum's teenage son, Jack. Right then. Okay, well, I may be confused. But anyway, if you can get a hold of yesterday's uh, Daily Telegraph, the full obituary's in there. Funny enough, I do what I usually do with yesterday's Daily Telegraph. I carried around all day and didn't I'd read it. I'd say you would do and do the crossword. No, I usually read that. I'm sorry I missed that. I thought, why? Oh, well, that's lying in my car, actually, now that I think about it. I'll just have a look at it today. But uh, that's re-released, and that's good news. But do you know what this means? It means that people can ring up people and they can order it. Right, there you go. before. Uh, well, uh, Judith is still there. I'm still here. Judith, I'll tell you what. Sorry, th that man's there. Sorry, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Good man. Good luck, good luck. Bye, Kevin. Bye. 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 There we are, you see. Do you know what this means? What? It means... You're, you're excited now, aren't you? Yeah, I can tell. This is very interesting. It means that you can get that album. Wow. Because it's been re-released. All you have to do is ring up somebody who knows what they're doing and they'll order it for you. And that what means... What if you don't like it? What if you don't like what? The album. You will like the what album. What if you're not a country and western fan? That's not country and western. Well, it's as near they're, as... They're all monologues. Monologues? Monologues. monologues. Monologue. Do you know what a monologue is? Oh, I do not, yeah. A monologue is when a man talks over music. Yes. That's not country and western. A country and western is what Hugo does. I mean, we can't have that about, oh, the, holiday, about the place. <laughs> no, so what, I can, what I'm saying to you is if you get a hold of a man uh, in, the, in the most, you know, most innocent sense, sense yeah. uh, who, who can order that for you, get it. Now, I suggest you ring my friend Bert McCormick in right. Ballyclare because I trust him. Or oh, there's another man here called Desi Fisher in Sounds Around in Derry Stoke, London Derry. These are the men who will get you stuff. And they can't get it if it's deleted, but if it's available at all, anywhere in the world, they'll get it for you. And they won't charge you an arm and a leg either. Brilliant. You ring Bert uh, Thingamay. Or maybe you don't want that. Do you want the album? I'll think about it. Oh, for God's sake, it's only a tenor. Uh, it's very, very good. And you should get it now while it's on release because it, it'll be probably be del deleted soon and you'll be able to sell it to somebody in 10 years' time. I did like that one about my son you and see? my daughter and the drum you, and the... the boom, boom, you, boom. You, do, you, go all, you go all misty around the edges when you have a son. You do. You go all, all peculiar and proud. I always find when I'm playing the flute, the tear comes to my eye. <laughs> Especially when I'm in Bern in Switzerland, far away from my native shankle. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. All right, Sir could Jimmy. I, could I take advantage of your airwaves to make a public apology to the emergency services? It's very because seldom they get it. I haven't told you my son's name yet. You're going to be bored listening to this, but this is... Ro it's Rory not Ronnie John, Flanagan, is it? Rory John Thurley. Rory John Thurley? Yes. Rory, oh. Actually, Rory John Patrick Jude Thurley. I, get, I thought it was the last baby I'm having. I'll give him four names. That's a great... What's that? What those names again? Rory? Rory John Patrick Jude Thurley. I think that's a great name. It's good, isn't it? He can stand I have up. a short list of 37... Do you know what he can do, that man, that son of yours? See, when he gets about 25 and he runs away from home, as they all do, he can stand up in a pub in Manhattan or he can stand up in Sydney Harbour and he can stand up and he'd say, My name is Rory John Patrick Jude Thorley and I'll take el any man in this bar. <laughs> and no man will come near him. With a name like that, no man will come near him. Well, he's, he just turned one last week and well, he's, he's already phoned successfully through to the emergency services four times, the latest one being this morning. So I'm never done apologising and saying, I'm sorry, it was my baby, he just pressed the nine button three times. I think babies shouldn't be allowed to use the phone. Well, I think the, the phone with the dial on it should actually be re reinvented mm -hmm. because it's the, it's the, I blame the push button phone, you see. Mm -hmm. He just gets his wee pudgy finger on the nine and he looks at me with a, with a mischievous smile and he just presses. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know, of course, that it's the number nine only being one. Does your baby shave yet? 
no, it'll be a month or two, yeah. I'm looking for a baby that shaves. Because uh, I, I played a record the other day and talked about a baby shaving, and I, I just I haven't seen that yet. That's a bit bizarre. It's a bit too surreal for me. It is, yeah. If anyone, if anyone know any babies who are shaving, give us a ring, because I, I'll come down and I'll get a taxi down. <laughs> okay? Try and order that. Uh, if, you don't like, if you don't like it, you sure send it back. Well, I, you see, I'm involved in this project mm -hmm. involving Her Majesty's government. They have a few million people rounded up around the country. It's an experiment to see whether any human being can actually survive on the dole and the money you get. Oh, I can. <laughs> on I the can. first day, I, I, I gave years. them a resounding no, was yeah. my answer. So I don't really have the resources to go out and buy John Wayne albums, much as I would love to. But see, the mistake that people make, you see, it's very easy to survive on the dole as long as all your friends are on the dole as well. What makes it difficult is when you're the only one who's on the dole and everybody else is working. It's all relative. Oh, I mean, I was on the dole for years and it was the happiest time of my life because everybody I knew weren't working because that was the time, you know, when Catholics didn't work. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, because, you know... Well, did you all get together and scrub potatoes or something? No, no, we all used to hang around together and just kind of, you know, hang around and do nothing. It was great. I, I was really happy. I learned more then than I did in subsequent years. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good thing to be on the dole as long as every, all your mates are on the dole as well. I bet you'll have a string of calls now telling you not now it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you very much. Indeed. God bless you, and may you have another child soon. Thank you. And may you meet the, the father soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Happy Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy Christmas. I was just talking to Jerry there to, uh, and, and telling him that there was another call for him, I think. Oh, that's Please. exciting, yeah. Tell him Jerry. that. Well, no, I didn't hear. And what's what's it about? <laughs> Hello. Oh, well, I don't think uh, I don't think we'll. Hello, it. hello. Uh, There's nobody in any of these lines. Sorry about that. I've got that horrible noise again. That's Sly and the Family Stone. That's great. That's uh, dance to the music. Hello, Harry. Good morning, Mr. Anderson. How are you, sir? Not too bad at all. And yourself? Good. Sorry. I thought a pregnant silence. No, 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 sorry, I'll tell you what happened. I, I made a mistake here, and I put my finger on the thing, then a record started, and I heard it, and it, it blocked you out, and I had no idea what you said, so I couldn't hear what you were saying, so I couldn't hear anything that I was saying either. Sorry. It was well, of no consequence. It was of no consequence at all. What can we do for you, then? Uh, I, I phoned your program this morning to make a complaint. Now, I know today is not complaints day. No, it's not. But I thought, you know, seize the hour, carpe diem. Carpe diem, is yes. right? Yes. What's up, Scott, for take care of the day by? I know, yes. So, yes. I thought to myself, I'll phone Jerry, because he defends the people and yes. all our local values. And the reason for my complaint was the gold strike in County Armagh, which was announced this morning. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't complain about the gold strike, mm -hmm. but it was the gentleman who announced the gold strike taking place in a, a, in a place called... A, we, he couldn't pronounce it for a start. Let's a, hear it. It's a wee townland called Cargillisgoran in South Armagh. Yes. Not only did he make a hems of trying to pronounce it, but he also made some very disparaging remarks about it. What did he say about it? Oh, he's, he dismissed it like, wherever that might be. Oh! Or whoever knows that place, you know. Oh! And, uh, yes, and I took umbrage at this. Indeed, and uh, yeah. not only did he do it once, he did it twice. Uh -huh. And his other uh, co-presenters uh, actually says, you'll be getting some phone calls about this. Name that man. Who was I he? don't know his name. I was... Uh, Is he a man from Radio Ulster? No, he's from England by his accent. Oh, well, that explains it. No, it doesn't explain it because the local BBC, I think, should take steps to ensure... That, that, that outsiders learn to pronounce our names correctly. Did you say this was on uh, Radio Ulster? It was on uh, Good Morning Ulster uh, this morning, yeah. Ah. Ah. Well, did, the presenter, did, did the presenter not take umbrage and pull this man up? Well, they did. They gave out his number over the air and said that anybody wanted to make a complaint, they should ring. Oh, that's so problem. I phoned, but he wasn't answering. No, no wonder. He's probably switched off his thing. So I, I thought, I thought uh, Jerry's the man to, to take this, you know. Too much of that sort of thing going on, I find, recently. I'll get to the bottom of it. I'll try Absolutely. and find out who... I mean, it's not as if Cargill is gone and is at the far ends of the earth. I mean, it's, it's surrounded by... It's near Hantelis Lay. There's something else we have to talk about here. Don't who? you think... Me and you? Yes. Don't you think maybe perhaps, you know... Is this private? Yes. Oh. Don't you think maybe perhaps you're a little touchy? No. No. I find if you don't... Uh, if you don't uh, stand up and, and object to these things, you're taking advantage of. Okay, maybe you're right, yeah. Okay, well, thank you I mean, for have your... I Have I called... Liver, Liverpool. Would you know what I was talking about? No, but uh, you're talking to a man who's been. <laughs> I've been on radio for. I, I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh yes, you've you've visited you're... Mara Timpney, haven't you? A man wrote an article in a well-known national newspaper about me because I couldn't pronounce urine. My what? Urine. But you, you know, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. What I... I'm saying is, I pronounced urine instead of urine, and a man wrote a five. 
five-column col- article about me, about how stupid I was. So that's what happens when you mispronounce one word. What happens if you mispronounce a town land? Oh, you, you offend everybody that hears it from Indeed. the locality. But I have to say this to you. It's not all that important. Oh, it is important. It's of extreme importance. Well, let me get to the bottom of it and I'll get back to you. Yes, okay. I'll, I'll and by the, way, by the way, if anybody wants to know where precisely Cargill is, Yes, it yeah. is surrounded by Lisley, Camach, Carrie-Hugh, Cross the Moyle, Dromelland and Tivna Cree. Yeah, yes. That's very near their news. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'm, I respect those names. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> okay, Jay. All the best. Look after yourself now. Bye bye. Bye bye. He's off his head. Hmm? He's off his head, that guy. We have a number of thoroughly unacceptable Christmas songs yeah. which we're not playing. I'm not going to play any of those. Good man. I'm not playing any of those. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow in the morning at the same time. If you want to give us a ring uh, or write to me, write to Jerry Allison, care of BBC Radio 4. It's now 12 o'clock exactly. <laughs>